Now let us look at Vuex. So what is Vuex? It is a state management library for the Vue.js framework. Okay? And it effectively implements most of the ideas of state management that we have seen before. What it does is introduces a concept called a store that is accessible globally. Right? We have already sort of seen why it makes sense to have the state visible globally to all the components. Right? And the good thing about Vuex is that it is officially supported by Vue, which means that any updates to the Vue.js framework are most likely also going to see updates in the Vuex state management library. Okay? And it will usually be kept in sync and it is very popularly uh, popular and widely used. So you can expect it to be maintained fairly well as well. So what we are going to do is just look at a couple of examples of code, but you know, not necessarily trying to sort of see how they work. We will not be looking at examples of functioning code over here, right? What the Vuex store looks like, for example, would be that you know you basically declare something as a variable as a new instance of Vuex dot store. Okay, so Vuex dot store is essentially a class, right? And a new instance of that class is instantiated at the top level app. Okay. And effectively, an example of what it would have is it would have its own notion of state, right, instead of data, right. So, where we usually had data in the terms of the view app, we now call it the state. And you will also see that there is something called mutations, right, which looks a little bit like the methods that were defined on the view app, okay. So, what exactly are mutations? We will get to those later. So, now how do you use state in a component, right? We would be able to directly, for example, do something like this, just like, you know, you could declare a component where it would say that it had access to a variable called count. I could say that, you know, I have a computed variable which returns store.state.count, okay. The alternative would have been directly over here, I could have this value store.state.count, okay. To make it a bit easier, in some cases, what you do is you have the store.state, right which has access to the variables and in order to make your internal access within the component a bit easier, you declare computed components, computed values that derive from those state variables, okay. Mostly optional, right, that is more a question of convenience, but ultimately remember why are we even using these patterns, it is more about the readability and trying to make the code understandable and maintainable. So having some of these instances over here can help to do that make it a bit cleaner to read and understand what the code is all about. So a few of the concepts right, uh, associated with view. One is of course that there is a single shared state object. right? So it is a global variable, it is shared across all the components. It has a tree structure, remember what I said about the component nesting being a tree kind of structure. So therefore the state object also has a tree structure. right? So it is sometimes called the shared state tree. And in terms of what data can be present inside a shared state object, it is pretty much the same constraints as whatever you can have inside a view data object. So what you could put inside view data, you can also have as a shared state object over here inside the Vuex framework. Now a component can still have local state, right? it can have its own data variables, right? which are not passed back and forth to siblings or to even the parents. Okay, that is still acceptable, Vuex does not prevent you from doing that and in some cases it may make sense, right? if a component very clearly only has certain variables that it does not need to communicate with the outside world, it probably makes sense to keep them internal to the component because otherwise the amount of data in the global store becomes large, more importantly it becomes hard to understand why they are there because they are not used by anyone except one particular component. Okay? Now this idea of a getter method right, is something that basically says, okay, how do I access a particular value? Right? So there are certain kinds of getter methods that are specified to make the code easier. right? So rather than particularly having to go and access the complete dot 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 way of getting to the particular value, there may be a simpler way by which you can access certain uh, values. Okay? Once again, this is mostly for convenience. And the other thing is when you register Vuex using the normal recommended ways of coding, 
there is a variable called this dot dollar store that becomes available within all the components which means that any component can basically access the store the global store through this dot dollar store and in turn can then you know access the variables inside the store okay so all of these are the basics of how data gets stored inside the shared state of a vuex of the vuex library okay now the question becomes how do you make any changes to that state right and as we already mentioned one of the main points of that state management pattern was to prevent arbitrary changes right so now what we say is in vuex if you want to change state anywhere you change a variable you have to do something called a mutation right and in particular you have to commit a mutation right now this commit is in a similar sense to what you would see in a database transaction or in something like you know a git uh, commit right what's happening in each of those cases is that you are sort of explicitly saying i want this change to happen now okay and you are saying okay we are not going to sort of in once i make this change it's recorded it can't be undone easily okay so committing a mutation in other words will pass on some information to the internal state variable or internal state object which tells it to update a certain value in a certain way okay so you never directly update a variable you have access to them but you never go and directly access uh, update those variables right you always call a method that updates a variable right and you explicitly commit this action now the nice thing about this commit way of doing things is that i can actually add an extra sort of piece of code inside the commit function that says any time i am committing a mutation i will also track it meaning that maybe i will you know either in local storage or maybe just in memory keep track of all the changes and the time at which it happened right so that i can get some useful functionality out of it what is that we'll see in a moment now one important thing to keep in mind as far as mutations are concerned is that anything happening inside a mutation must be synchronous okay that has implications later right so we'll get to that in a moment but for now just keep in mind that anything that happens inside a mutation must be synchronous code so the like i said you can track what happens inside uh, when uh, mutations are committed right and what is usually done is that the view dev tools the extensions that we have for debugging right allow you to record what happens in each mutation okay so every time a mutation is committed something gets logged so to say right it could either be just in the memory of the system or it might even be written out somewhere in the dev tools it's basically just sort of logged in memory the important point is that every single mutation that was requested who requested it the time of request all of that information gets stored inside the dev tools memory right which means that you can do something called time travel debugging right what is time travel debugging you can basically go back and play the mutations in order from the beginning right at any point in principle you could sort of step backwards but stepping backwards is a little bit more complicated it means you need to store the previous state and the previous state and the previous state all the way back to the beginning in some cases it's simpler to say if i want to go back one step i will just reset the system and start from the beginning and play it till the n minus 1th step right if i'm if i have finished n mutations i will reset and play up to n minus 1 in order to get back to the same state okay which means that we can basically reproduce the system state at any point and this is what is given the you know nice sounding term time travel right it sort of allows you to go back and forth in the history of the system which makes debugging a lot easier so an example of what a mutation would look like right it would be defined simply like a function right it's increment and it could basically take of course the state because after all this is a mutation that is defined with respect to a vuex state object so it has the state associated with it the state variable in this case what we are saying is you know i would also give it some additional parameter n which is you know how much to increment a particular counter by and what we are saying is this method or mutation when it is committed will increment the state count by the value n a normal way of calling this would be something like store dot commit increment now in this case increment is also expecting the second value n right so unless n has a default of 1 we would probably need to 
you know define another function out there which says that if I if it's called without this second argument it would just be called as a commit to increment. You could also give it an argument by saying store commit increment but now with an argument 10 which will basically be fed in as the second value to the increment function. And there is yet another notation that basically says you can do store dot commit and pass the entire thing as an object right where the commit type is specified as increment and the amount is given over here as 10 right it should probably be the n over here which is given as 10 right. So you could specify more details and give them all together in an object which is then passed into the increment uh, function and used in order to perform the computation okay. The important point I mean this this is just the right hand side is more about syntax how do you use it. The important point is that the mutation itself being committed means that internally right the dev tools for example could go and say that anytime the increment mutation is committed it gets logged okay. It does not have to go and change the increment function the commit function itself will take care of that. So now remember what I said about mutations being synchronous let us look at this example you want to do time travel debugging right you want to be able to sort of say what is the state of the system after each and every mutation. The problem with async operations is that they basically come back after some time right there is a callback right. So it could either be a timer based callback or a fetch API based callback or something else which says that I do not immediately have a result okay. Now what do you do in such a case you cannot really record that as a mutation and then say I will be able to time travel I cannot really go back easily right. So mutations in other words put a restriction saying look if you are committing a mutation it has to be instantaneous it has to be deterministic it has to be synchronous no, not deterministic but you know synchronous something which basically is computed immediately and updated. So no asynchronous calls are permitted but there are cases where you would want to have asynchronous updates right. So you bring in a new notion of something called an action and an action is something that can contain asynchronous functionality right and the way that it is usually done is an action could also be defined with the same name increment right and in this case what it would say is basically that you know what it needs to do is it needs to commit the increment mutation okay and the way that you would call it is rather than store dot commit increment you would say store dot dispatch increment okay. The wording has a slightly different meaning right in English dispatch basically means to send a message right. So you are sort of dispatching the increment action and the idea behind it is you do not expect the result to come back immediately okay. It you dispatch it it then in turn goes commits the actual uh, mutation and then comes back in this case it might be instantaneous but even if it is not it is okay an action is permitted to come back later okay looks like it is overkill right I mean what difference does it make whether I call it store dot dispatch increment or store dot commit increment well there are cases for example like this where an action can contain asynchronous calls right think about some hypothetical case from the you know this is from the Vuex uh, examples where maybe you are trying to create a checkout shopping cart right. So things like the shopping cart request itself can be committed it is a simple thing to do you immediately right are just changing a uh, state variable. But then after that the actual by products right this function is probably a much more involved thing right it takes you to a page where you need to enter the purchase information then you know it comes back from there with either a success or a failure right which is why this is an asynchronous operation. We cannot expect it to come back immediately right and what it does is in turn it could have its own callbacks right. So this these two things are essentially callback functions okay and in the case of a success it basically commits a new mutation which basically says okay you know it succeeded right. So this entire thing it is not just the uh, commit types dot success it is not this this entire function over here is the success callback. Okay, and similarly this entire function out here is the failure callback okay. In other words if the async operation corresponding to byproduct succeeds it would call the success callback if it failed it would call the failure callback 
okay and either way something would get updated so the point is this checkout could no longer be a mutation because it contains asynchronous operations within it but by changing into actions we allow it to at least be recorded in that way what does it mean it means that full time travel debugging through an action directly is not possible but the action in turn is calling a number of commit operations over here right and each of those in turn would get recorded properly right so it makes sure that even though you have some kind of asynchronicity the actual mutations finally do get committed in the order in which they happened at some point okay so that's why you have these additional actions and even though it looks a little bit like double work for simple cases it makes sense for slightly more complicated cases over here you can also compose actions right you could define one action and you could have another action which basically dispatches the first action okay waits for a result from there and then finally does a commit okay so there are ways by which you could have multiple actions being composed one on top of another and get more uh, interesting functionality overall okay so to summarize all of this right the vuex state management pattern is something which it is complex right uh, i mean the point is state management is quite complex when you are dealing with multiple components and some kind of globally accessible state is required right the most important thing is you need to control how and when the state variables can get changed or mutated so that you have maintainability of the code okay now the fundamental question over here of course becomes should you just be using vuex in every app that you build and the short answer is no right and in fact if you look at the flux documentation the redux documentation there are a number of instances where people basically say okay you know a lot of people ask this question should we be using flux or redux or some kind of state management pattern or library and the simple answer is if you have got to the point where your state management is getting too complicated and you are really thinking of is there a better way to do this that's when you should be looking at libraries like flux or in this case vuex right if you are dealing with fairly simple hierarchies of components that do not have much of you know nested data you don't have like global uh, you don't have multiple views that are trying to update the same uh, state and so on right you are probably better off just keeping with the basic view and not really worrying too much about vuex okay now clearly the more complicated your app gets the more likely you are to need vuex so it's good to be familiar with it at least at some point 